Now, there are basically five steps of revenue recognition as prescribed under MFRS 15. These are as follows. First, identify the contract with the customer. Second, identify performance obligations. Third, determine the transaction price. Fourth, allocating the transaction price to performance obligations. The fifth one would be recognize revenue when the entity satisfies a performance obligation. Okay now, let's assume that the clients have fulfilled the five steps, then these are the accounts involved. Revenue or sales accounts, accounts receivable, cash or bank accounts, sales return in the case that the customer returns the goods, sales discounts, both sales return and sales discounts will reduce the value for the sales accounts. Bad debt, and also allowance for bad debt. You need to remember the initial journal entries very well. If not, go back and revise here. Okay now, in order for the clients to pass journal entry in revenue recognition, the entry is debit accounts receivable and credit revenue accounts. There must be a basis and that basis comes from the source documents and the accounting records. Among others are customer's sales order, credit approval form, open order report, shipping documents, sales invoices, other documents, namely the customer or debtor's monthly statements, credit memorandum, remittance advice, and also write-off authorization. Now, from the journal entry, it will then be transferred to the ledger, and this process will continue throughout one financial year. Hence, these transactions will be accumulated and classified accordingly until year end. And it is the management of the business entities responsibility to prepare these financial statements for year end. And this is the unaudited financial statements. Now, this is whereby these accounts in itself contains the management assertions. Generally, all the management assertions are relevant for each of the accounts as presented under ISA 315 in its explanatory note A, 1 to 9 subsection A and B has divided management assertions into two categories. Subsection A is about classes of transactions and events and related disclosures. And subsection B is about account balances and related disclosures at the period end. Nonetheless, different accounts contain or highlight specific management assertions which are relative important in comparative with other accounts. For instance, the revenue. The management assertions focuses more on occurrence or validity as compared to an expense account which is more focused on completeness. For ease of understanding, here in the revenue transactions, let's focus on two accounts. One is the revenue account, another is the accounts receivable. In the case of the revenue accounts, occurrence is considered very important. Is it true that revenue transactions really take place? And also cut off. For cut off, whether the transactions and events have been recorded in the correct accounting period. This is to ensure that no premature revenue is recognised. Meanwhile, for accounts receivable, the specific management assertions are existence, whether or not these accounts receivable really exist, it is not some bogus accounts receivable here, yeah? valuation, whether there is a proper valuation, as there may be bad debts which have not been written off by the management. Okay now. There is a need to actually be wary that there may be possible material misstatements in these related accounts pertaining to revenue transactions. Basically, there are two categories of material misstatements. One is unintentional, the other is due to intentional, which is also known as fraud. Now, in the video case presented, you will be able to see both intentional and non-intentional misstatements. Do enjoy and hope you learned something from the video cases. Thank you.